Hi, glad you could join us. I'm Annette Sherman. This is Community. Well, I think we have a treat for you today. We've got a very special guest who is involved in some really special activities. He is a bird interpreter, bird watcher, birder. We'll find out the exact title for Owen Kimura. Owen, we want you to look at that camera, darling, and say hi. Not say hi to everybody, but sort of give them a big smile. You got one in there? I'll try. Uh, hi. <laughs> beautifully done. You ain't seen nothing yet, as they say in show business. All right, Owen, let's start by telling me about, uh, very succinctly, about your background and your professional life, and I know that can fill several hours, uh, before Sarasota. Okay, I started at uh, Young and Rubicam, uh, where I had the opportunity of uh, taking Rod Serling on his first press tour to mm. promote the Twilight Zone. Now, there are some people out there who don't have any idea who Rod Serling, but there are a lot okay. of people who do. So. Okay, Rod Serling was the uh, writer, creator of this uh, wonderful show, The Twilight Zone, uh, which uh, was uh, the first big show they ever worked on. And, and we did the national promotion, the national publicity uh, for the program. It was a CBS program, but I worked at the advertising agency. Uh, Sanka was the uh, sponsor, the coffee that let you sleep. Mm. Twilight Zone would be the show that kept you That's awake. That's kind of a cute twist, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, you were with Young and Rubicon for how long? For 10 years. My goodness. 1953. Big, big, big <laughs> advertising agency in New York. Still exists, Young yeah, and Rubicon? Oh, yeah. It's uh, like it used to be the... Uh, Rolls-Royce of the agencies. Yeah. It is still the Cadillac of the agencies. <laughs> NBC TV. You yes. Went? Uh, I went directly from Young and Robocam to NBC, where I stayed for 20 years. What and were we you doing there in 20 we years? We did the national promotion for a lot of uh, TV shows. Uh, most of them were uh, quality shows, but I did work on uh, My Mother the Car, Oh, listen, you remember that you show? Know, <laughs> today, when you look at what's on television, you realize yeah. that some of these things that you're not uh, the <coughs> most uh, thrilled with in, in recollection are just head and shoulders above what we well, have now. Well, I, I do say, though, that I did work on programs you may remember, like Holocaust, oh, sure. Jesus of Nazareth, yeah. uh, Shogun. And when you, you say know, worked on, what was your function? We, my job was to, get, to do the national uh, promotion, uh, publicity campaign, setting up uh, newspaper, magazine, television, interviews. Kept you hopping, right, Owen? Kept you hopping. Kept me hopping quite a bit. Uh, you formed, at a certain point, you formed your own company with your wife, Betty. And I, I want to talk about Betty for a moment before you tell me about sure. that. Because Betty Kimura, many of you out there know of Betty Kimura, have seen her perform. She's an extremely talented jazz performer. She sings, she plays, she does a lot of things. Also, if you pay attention, as this program leaves the air, you will hear a special song that Betty composed and performed, especially for this program. We're very proud of that. You went into business with your talented wife, Betty. Yes, we started in our living room, and we ended up on Madison. You started in your bedroom, which you're not talking <laughs> about, but okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we ended up on Madison Avenue, uh, where uh, we were uh, lucky enough to get clients like, well, big companies, well, at least General Motors used to be a big company. They They're may not be in business they, as we speak. It's, but it, it, it's unbelievable what's happened to them in the years. Uh, unbelievable. But when you're talking about they were major. Now, you were a little company with we all these were, major sponsors, major yes. uh, 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 clients. Clients. We had uh, GTE and AT&T. But, of course, you, your experience with Young and Rubicom and with NBC TV allowed you a lot of entree. And they knew you. And they, they figured, this me. guy's good. And, well... They, at least they went with us. <laughs> <laughs> so you had a very successful run with your own company. Yes. Uh, we uh, ran the company for uh, 15 years, and I finally sold it uh, in uh, 1999. Happy to get, happy, to, it's like a boat, happy to get it and delighted to get rid of it. It was uh, both very <laughs> wonderful occasions, yes. Uh, Ken Burns. Yes. Uh, your association with Ken Burns followed that along the line. Yes. Uh, we, uh, through General Motors, the, they were the sole corporate underwriter, and we had the opportunity of uh, getting together with Ken Burns uh, to help uh, with the promotion for a program you may have heard of, uh, the Civil War. 
Sure. The uh, Civil War series. So you uh, worked with him for how many years? We worked with uh, Ken for 10 years. All right. So you have a habit of connecting and staying around. You don't just stay out of there for six months and two months. No, no. This no. is a long time. Ken Burns, uh, fantastic, fantastic work that he's done, and you should be very proud. I just said he invited you uh, for a visit just last April. What was that yes, about? Yes. He invited Betty and me to uh, go up to Walpole, New Hampshire, where he works, uh, to screen uh, the program that will be coming up in uh, the fall of next year uh, called uh, Our National Parks, or The National Parks, <coughs> pardon me, The National Parks, America's Best Idea. Ah, and it'll be a 12-hour miniseries uh, oh. that'll run over six nights, two hours a night, about our national parks. Well, we'll look for it. The Ken Burns, and it's probably PBS. So you can it check. is PBS, yeah, yes. You can check that out. Um, Tell a bit about, um, uh, I want to find out before we go further, further about, because you're, you're a bird interpreter, bird watcher, a, a bird birder, and we haven't really touched on that because your background is so fascinating, but how did you start with your love of interest in birds? Well, I was 13 years old when I was going fishing in, up in New Jersey, and I met a friend of mine. Uh, who was looking at a bird. I had seen, just seen that bird, and it was so beautiful. And he was there with his binoculars. And I said, are you a bird watcher? And he said, yeah, what of it? Yeah. <laughs> very Ready defensive. Uh, I said, well, that was a very interesting bird I just saw. What was it? And it was a yellow shafted flicker. That bird is what got me started watching bird. It was a member of the woodpecker family. And uh, I said, instead of going fishing, can I join you and look at some more birds? through your binoculars and so forth, and that was the beginning. We used to go birding before we went to school each morning. Oh, and I would imagine at 13, if the other guys knew about this, you were subject to a little kidding. Yeah, and it didn't bother me. All right. You were really that hooked and, and that interested. I think it's incredible that you, you just found something that turned you on. Absolutely. At 13, you haven't stopped since. And I have, I, you're have not at least stopped. 40 now. Uh, Never mind. No, don't, don't I've gone on the road. I've, we've covered shows in India and uh, in Africa, and the bird book and the binoculars always came with me. If, if there was any uh, time, uh, I would uh, take uh, it. You probably cannot simply answer this, this next question. Uh, but for us nature dummies, all right, what actually do you find about the bird world that, that has captivated you for so many years? I think it's the beauty of the birds. Uh, it's the, uh, the attempt to uh, identify them. To uh, The most important thing, though, I think, is it's the thrill of the hunt without killing anything. What are you hunting? Are you hunting to hunting, find new birds? Find new birds, right. Okay. Would it insult you terribly, I don't mean you personally, but your, your endeavor, to say that these are not the smartest creatures on the face of the earth? Uh, in fact, no, they, they're known as bird brain. It, yes. Uh, in fact, uh, there, just, is a, there is a, uh, a, wild, a rare bird alert uh, in the Sarasota area, which is uh, referred to as birdbrain.com. B R D B R A I N dot com. If you want to find out what's going on with birds, check on birdbrain dot com. Uh, but they're beautiful, <laughs> beautiful creatures. They're beautiful I creatures, and it's a way of keeping your mind stimulated uh, to always be able, or to often be able, to put names to the birds that you've seen. Okay, so there, there's the challenge there. Absolutely. To see, to see these creatures flying through and say, oh, I know what that is. This is a, and later on, we do have some pictures that Owen brought with him. Uh, and, and I think they're, they're beautiful pictures that he photographed. So there's no end to his talents. <laughs> um, the fact is that, that we'll see them and we'll have you describe uh, those birds. So but uh, on, the, on the score of uh, birds, I know people uh, who will drop their business, travel cross country uh, to see a new bird, to get a new bird to add to their life list. It's just amazing how obsessive birding can become. Okay, yeah? I'll, I'll take your word for it. You're <laughs> the first one I've really known that well. Um, you're involved with Mayaka River State Park. You're a senior volunteer and a bird interpreter. Tell me about that involvement and what, what all goes on. Well, I think uh, it started when uh, Betty was, uh, after I had retired, we moved down here, and B Betty uh, would say, why don't you get the hell out of the house and, <laughs> and Sounds do like something. my Betty. <laughs> <laughs> and do something. So uh, she said, why, why not do something with birds? So I wrote, uh, I went over to Mayaka Park and 
and volunteered uh, to be uh, a bird identifier and hoped somebody would follow up and offer me that opportunity. And they did, and I went out there, and, and it's been now 10 years since we started the bird uh, interpreter program, uh, which we uh, had, I started it on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and now we have somebody out there every day of the week. Oh, uh, and what is the difference between a bird interpreter, a bird watcher, and a birder? Okay, a bird watcher is someone who uh, likes to look at birds, may set up a feeder in, the, in their backyard, and just enjoy looking at the birds, not particularly knowledgeable about what the names of the birds are. A birder is someone who will do what I told you. He will uh, always identify the birds and will go long distances to see a new bird that he can add to his life list. He's an addict. Yes. And, and a bird interpreter? Uh, well, a bird interpreter is a title that the, the state has. And uh, when uh, someone from one of the local high schools asked me, uh, oh, you're a bird interpreter? What is that bird saying? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I thought maybe it's time for us to change the <laughs> title to bird naturalists. Uh, and now that's what we call ourselves, bird naturalists. <laughs> there is a lot going on at uh, Mayaka. Uh, and I, I have a website for you. And, and Damon, if you put that on the screen, you can get in touch with these people and find out what all is going on. Uh, find out what, if you'd like to get involved, when, where, and how you can get involved. Later on, I'm going to give you an email address if you want to get in touch with Owen and find out from Owen about some of the things that he talked about or about some of the other things that uh, you might some curiosities that he's aroused. Um, your, oh, I love this. Uh, I want to know about this. This is called, listen to this, Close Encounters of the Bird Kind, uh, uh, Stetson University's Elder Hostel Program. Tell me about that. Yes, uh, we'll be teaching a course on uh, birds. We'll be uh, doing PowerPoint presentations and then taking people who have never birded before uh, out into the field and helping them to identify birds. We'll bring two spotting scopes on tripods. Uh, Miss Betty will probably help me uh, set up the tripods. Uh, and the telescopes and actually zero in on the birds uh, so that people can see them up close and personal. Uh, if you want more information, it's going by you very, very rapidly. Uh, you can uh, get in touch with the, the we're going to give you the website again with the people there at Mayaka, or it was, uh, we're going to give you the uh, email address and you can get in touch with Owen and make sure one-on-one -on -one that you can. In fact, would you put that email address, I, I noticed we've got about two minutes to this segment, put that email address on uh, the screen for viewers and it, it is simply, it's, a, it's an easy one, O for Owen. O Kamora, C O M O R A, at AOL.com. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So if you want to email Owen and find out, well, what about this? Or what about the other thing? He will. He will respond to you and give you information. Uh, Annette, we're also doing an elder hostel here in Sarasota uh -huh. uh, that's sponsored by the Senior Friendship Center. Oh, wonderful. And we'll be doing that in January after we do the Stetson University one. All right, so you can find out the dates on that. I guess you can get in touch with Owen or you can get in touch with Senior Friendship Center and find out from them. Um, we're going to have to take a short break, Owen, so stay right where you are. Okay. We're going to find out... Uh, a little bit more about uh, the uh, Audubon Society. We're going to find out about some of the other organizations that deal with birds and birding. Then we're going to see some fabulous bird pictures that Owen has taken, and he'll describe them to us. And I got a promise from Owen that he's going to give us a very brief course in birding right here on this program, as Ed <laughs> Sullivan used to say. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. As you probably know, I wear a different hat for each new community program, and I, I know you like the hats. But the real acclaim for this program is all about the entertainment and information so many of you tune in for. You can find out about the latest major events that'll be happening. Meet the actors and directors of upcoming plays. Learn about the latest innovative medical procedures from renowned professionals. Enjoy some of our terrific kids and their accomplishments. The extraordinary, the humorous. Title of your play. Last night I dreamed I married a chicken. Tell me if I got this right. Last night I dreamed I married a chicken. Correct. Oh, okay. 
all that and so much more here on Comcast Channel 21, six days each week. I guess that's why the latest independent survey found that Community has the largest viewership of any local program in this area. Hey, it may not be the hat after all. Here are some of the people who are in the Community Video Archives Hall of Fame. CVA's mission is to record and preserve a living history of this community. We do that by professionally producing biographical videos of outstanding living Sarasotans who've been chosen for our Hall of Fame. There are over 100 videos to date. Again, what you're seeing are just tiny clips of just some of the individuals we have honored. All CVA videos are available for borrowing slight books from any Sarasota County Public Library. Sarasota County schools, staff, and students see the videos via their multimedia system. If you'd like to know more about Community Video Archives and how to nominate an honoree, please call me at 365-7052. We're back. My very special guest is Owen Kimura. Owen is a birder, he's a bird interpreter, he's a bird watcher, uh, but he's mm. phenomenally experienced and, and, and wonderfully talented in that area. Uh, Owen, we were talking about uh, organizations that you, and there are so many, I'm not gonna list them all, but I am curious about the Sarasota Audubon Society. Live and well? Oh yes, and uh, I would encourage anyone to come out uh, to the meetings which are held on the first Monday of every, every month uh, where you have uh, very interesting speakers and you'll learn about uh, the weekly field trips that you could participate in I'm gonna through tell you, Audubon. I'm going to tell you a tale out of school. Uh, my husband and I live in a high rise downtown and we have a beautiful view and I'll come home sometimes and I'll see him just looking out into the blue and he said, you know, and of course a bird is soaring around there and he said, you know, when I die, I want to come back as a bird. That's touching. Uh, you can understand that's that. That's touching, yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I, why would you want to do that? Look at them, and, and that's what you're talking yes, about partly. How it's just, uh, it becomes an obsession, but it's a beautiful obsession. Let's talk about uh, the visuals. Okay, you also are obviously very, very handy with a camera. It, it helps to have a good camera and a nice long lens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see that first picture, if you will. And, and what do we see here? Yeah, we're seeing uh, an almost mature bald eagle uh, that I photographed on Clay Gully Road right uh, near Mayaka River State Park. Now, uh, do, they, do they have to uh, uh, sit for you? You have to be quick, don't you? So, and you have to be lucky sometimes. Ah, what do we see here? We're seeing a, a great horned owl that I photographed uh, outside uh, the back of my house in a big pine tree right behind the mm -hmm. pond in the back of my house. Beautiful. Creature. Great horned owl. This is an osprey that caught a largemouth bass and wow. flew by me on the bird walk at Mayaka. Wow. Red-headed woodpecker uh, on Clay Gully Road again uh, one of the, the more uh, uncommon birds that we have uh, in Florida. Uh, this one was not too far away, uh, but far enough that it wasn't going to make a good picture. I'm, I have this bird pod. It's an iPod with 650 bird calls on it. And ah. I, I played the call of the red-headed woodpecker, and he came right to me. Ah. Yeah. That's also part of the fun of it, having these bird calls. It's what amazing. do we see there? This is a red-shouldered hawk, probably our most common hawk, a beautiful one. And you can see uh, the uh, red patch on the shoulder from which it gets its name, the red-shouldered hawk. We have here some roseate spoonbills. I leave this on a little while, Damon, because it's quite, isn't there quite a story to, to what we see uh, there. These roseate spoonbills, uh, we just yesterday at the bird walk, we had 37 of them. Wow. Beautiful birds. People uh, who are not into birding, first off, uh, think those are flamingos because yeah. they're pink. Yeah. They are roseate spoonbills, and look at uh, look at the spoon-like bill, which they sweep in the water back and forth to catch crustaceans and other animals swimming around in the water. Okay. Behind them uh, is, yeah. is a white pelican. Okay. 
Okay. The white pelican is a true snowbird that comes that's back. A, that's that white that, pelican that with they, a yellow bill. Yes. And they are uh, snowbirds that come down from the north. They spend their winter here. Uh, they've got a nine foot wing spread. Mm. One of the largest birds. Nine in, foot. Nine foot wing spread. And unlike the brown pelican, which, you know, dives into the water, yeah. these guys sit on the water, corral the fish, and uh, eat them off the surface of the water. I wonder if that, in fact, is where the expression um, snowbird comes from. It's very, uh, it is very likely that it is. Okay, the last picture that we have, do we have, we have one more. Okay. This is a scissor-tailed flycatcher that I photographed three days ago uh, on the road, on right off Fruitville Road, going to the Bethel Mennonite Church. What did you think that bird was going to church? Was <laughs> he was there last year, and I just decided he, to drop by and see if he returned well, he another did. snowbird. He, he's, he's now, he's into the religion, is yeah. all. Yeah, <laughs> you never know. Um, the first requirement uh, to become a bird watcher, uh, what would that be? To be interested, just to be interested. Then you get yourself uh, a field guide and a pair of binoculars. And I would recommend you get a pair of eight power binoculars, eight by 42. Eight is the uh, magnification, and 42 is the amount of light that is allowed in uh, to the uh, lenses. Uh, and uh, you're all set. A pair of binoculars, a, uh, a field guide, and then join one of the local uh, birding groups like the Audubon Society and go out on their weekly uh, field trips, learn from the people in the field. Uh, and you will become a birder. The most, three most important things for being a successful birder. Practice, practice, practice. Okay, and, and um, I want to put that uh, uh, email address on the screen, Damon, if you will, the email address for Owen Kimura, that you, if this is going by you too quickly and, we, and you, we got a little hooked on looking at those beautiful pictures or whatever, uh, email Owen, he, he, he'd love to hear from you. Uh, you talked about bird calls. Yes. Do you do them? Oh, well, once in a while I, I uh, might do one or two. Uh, there is a uh, barred owl, which is a local owl here, and he says, who cooks for you? And because he's a southern barred owl, he may say, who cooks for you all? He goes, who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? Uh, and I won't do any more. Why not? I love <laughs> no, it. No, that's about it. <laughs> that's, that's just your big one. <laughs> then I'll take my bird part out and <laughs> demonstrate to people the difference between the call of the, of the greater yellow legs as opposed to the call of the lesser yellow legs and so forth. Well, and we who get wouldn't too, know too the involved. difference between yeah. the call of the greater legs <laughs> and the lesser? Yeah. Right, um, right, if I <laughs> asked you to give our viewers and me um, a five minute uh, quickie kind of basic bird watching course. Could you possibly do that? Uh, possibly. Uh, what I would recommend to anyone who's uh, interested in birds, after you get yourself the binoculars and the field guide, take a look at the birds in your own backyard and take them one by one. Look at the bird, write down in a notebook, don't look into the uh, field guide. Look in uh, into a notebook, look at the bird, write down the uh, the uh, identifying features of it, and then go to the uh, field guide, the bird book, and check it out. But uh, take the birds one at a time. As soon as you master one, like the blue jay, or the uh, Carolina wren, or the robin, or whatever, go to the next one, and go on to the next one. Once you're pretty sure you've got the birds in your backyard, expand, and then join those groups that I was talking about groups like Audubon, or come out to Mayaka, come out to the bird walk, where we will identify the birds. I and a number of other devoted people set up, uh, we will set up our own spotting scopes uh, and zero in on the birds and give you the identifying features and how you can identify the birds on your own. But join in with other groups and uh, other people who are knowledgeable and you will become a birder very quickly. Hi. It, it doesn't seem like uh, uh, an activity that's, that's terribly expensive to be involved with. Of course, the binoculars, but the binoculars can be used for other things as well. And, and you're joining these groups, is that an expensive deal? No, no. Uh, I think it's $15 a year to become a member of Audubon. Uh, and you could get into the park and uh, participate for $5 or get an annual uh, pass, I think, for $25. Uh, but it is, uh, it can become expensive. now. Uh, birding is the uh, 
fastest growing outdoor activity wow. in, in America. Fa uh, bigger than all the fishing and hunting combined. And uh, we spend something like- That's so like extraordinary uh, because fishing and hunting, you have a result or you take some home some fish. Well, luckily you do. And, and hunting is assume the same thing, but birding just gives you that personal f feeling. Yeah, but there are something like 50 million of us uh, who are either birders or bird watchers. And we, uh, you can spend a lot of money. There's $34 billion a year on birding stuff being spent. Like stuff what? Uh, binoculars, telescopes, uh -huh. bird feeders, bird trips. There are professional bird tour leaders uh, who will, uh, I'm going on a bird tour. Uh, How come I'm not surprised? <laughs> okay, go ahead, go ahead. In Colorado, where we'll be looking for different grouse and Tomagen, partridges, uh, in locations all over Colorado with a company called Victor Emanuel. Uh, let's put that, that uh, email address on the screen. We have less than about two minutes. Okay. Think about perhaps the most memorable moment or one of the most memorable moments in your long, long career as a birder. Well, I think the first one, the yellow shafted flicker might have been one of the uh, high points, just getting me interested in birding. Uh, another one would have been uh, just a couple of uh, years ago in Costa Rica when I saw the resplendent Quetzal. Uh, one Had you known about the resplendent Quetzal before that? Before I went, I <laughs> knew I studied up on it. Yes, uh, up in the cloud uh, in the. Um, cloud forest of uh, Costa Rica. Uh, another one was seeing my first um, American condor uh, before they were all brought in and captured and then uh, uh, released uh, out in California. Uh, but I, th I tell you, every trip, every trip I take is something that's memorable. The most, I don't know how to put this, not exciting, strongest, the most extraordinary bird. If you had to pick one. If I had to pick one, uh, I, I think uh, the, uh, there are birds in, in Arizona that are really outstanding. Uh, and uh, the hummingbirds of Arizona, maybe a dozen different hummingbirds that you can see out there. We only see more or less one, the ruby-throated hummingbird here. But to see bird feed is just filled with uh, different species of hummingbirds is thrilling. And I would recommend uh, a trip to the Ramsey Canyon in Arizona uh, or some of the other canyons that would be thrilling. But there are so many thrills that you can get from birding. I think you've transmitted that to us today. Owen, you're a very special, phenomenal man. Thanks for being with us. Thank we're, you for having me. We're just out of time. Enough time to thank you for being with us and helping to uh, give this program the largest viewership of any local program in this area, according to the uh, most recent independent survey. We're on 11 times a week. We're on 7.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. Monday through Friday and then again on Sunday at 6 p.m. We're a public service of Comcast in conjunction with Community Video Archives. We're on Comcast Channel 21. And we're about out of time. Uh, we'll see you next time. And again, thank you so much, Owen. You're a pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye for now. The time really flew. We bid you adieu from community. If you want to know why we love it here, so check out community. Well, it's a who's who, a what's, when and where show. It's a mover and shakers who care show. Meet your neighbors and friends, each one has a passion. The topics vary from nature to fashion. The host with the most on our cultural coast is a net with community. See you next time.